Hi guys, so in this video we're going to be covering the steps to create an assembly drawing and what we'll be looking to do is create a drawing very close to what you see in front of you and as you can tell we'll be using the the assembly, the universal joint assembly which we created from the previous drawing. So this is a fairly well laid out drawing, the views are nice and clear, all the parts themselves are ballooned with item numbers, nice clear well sized bill of materials here in the right hand corner and you have a little isometric view here as well to make it a little bit clearer again so the main aim of any of these assembly drawings is to have a drawing which is clear enough for someone to assemble to assemble this universal joint if they were handed the drawing we don't want any and we don't want them to be cluttered and we don't want them to be too small with the views so that's enough talking for me let's just jump straight into it so i'll close this down for a second and before we even open one of the drawing templates, the first thing we want to do with this assembly, before we even start drawing, is we want to lock it up. So we don't want this to be free to rotate at any stage. And a nice orientation for this will be with the handle pointed directly back over the part itself. So I'm going to click on Mate. I'm going to click on this edge. I'm going to just deselect that face first. Click on this edge here, or this face rather. Click on this face here at the side of the bracket, and I'm going to apply that mate. So this has locked up the rotation of the actual assembly itself. And for this example, that's what I'm looking for, because I don't want the assembly to be moving or rotating, or be able to move or rotate once I start the drawing. So next up, we'll get into the drawing. So if I click on, I'm just going to open one of the drawing templates, and that thing is going to be beeping all video, I apologise. And here's our drawing template. So the first thing we need to do is we come across to our view layout tab. And I'm going to click on model view. So if I click on model view, because I have my assembly open, it's here. If not, just go to browse and select it from there. Click on next. So this arrow up here. Click on that. And just scroll it down a small bit. So for my first view, I want to drop is a front view and scrolling down along i'm going to go with this see you have a couple of options here for display style for this first one i want hidden lines remo removed and i'm not going to use the sheet custom scale or the, sh the sheet scale i'm going to select custom so use custom scale and change that to one as to one so what you see is that's increased the size of the view that will actually be dropped so i'm going to drop that there and that's perfect for my first view. So I'm just going to orientate it a small bit over for, further to the left, which is kind of similar to what we'll be looking for here. It's kind of over to the left a little bit. Back into the drawn. The next view I need to create is a section view. So what a section view is, is it's a chop, it's chopping straight down through the center of the part or wherever I put this, this section view line. It cuts down through the part and it creates creates a cross-section view of it. So if I come along here, now what I want to do is I want this section view to be directly down through the middle of the part. So I'll snap it there to the midpoint of that line and I'll click OK. Now next pops up a dialog box for my options. The pre-selects, if this is what you have as pre-selects, just go with that. So we want auto etching and we, we can leave the rest unselected. Click on OK. And this is my my section view. So I'm going to drop that to the right hand side of the front view that I have created. So this is my section view. You see that all the, the parts have been auto hatched. That was the, the pre-select that we had used. And yeah, that's basically, that's my section view. Just to note here, this piece of text for the section view, we can just move it up a little bit closer to the, to the part itself. So that's our section view dropped. The next thing I'm going to drop in is our parts list so our bill of materials as it's otherwise known come across come up to annotations so annotation tab here come across the tables click the drop down and select bill of materials so once i've select bill of materials it's asking me to select a drawing view to specify the model for creating the bill of materials. So either of these will work because they're both the same model. So I'm just going to click the, the front view that I dropped initially. Don't worry about any of this stuff here on the left. And just click OK. 
and you'll see here that it's dropping in my my table so I'm going to drop in the table it doesn't matter if it's crossing the the outer edges of the template itself we're going to adjust the sizes and that so tidy up the the once it's dropped just make sure to tidy up the width of the column so what we want to do is kind of tighten them up enough that they're all single lines so not so we're going to just go with that so they're all single line we close in the parts part number as well tighten that up a bit and we'll tighten up the item number as well so just just tidying it up tidying up the the column widths so that it's a little bit a little bit neater and we're going to drop it there so that's a kind of sorted and dropped and the next thing we want to do with all of these these bills of materials or parts lists which we drop we want to make sure that it's it's organized correctly so it's sorted correctly by part number so what i want to do here is right click on the bill of materials and select sort now i want to select you see there's a number of different options here what we want to go with is part number and ascending and click ok into that so what you see is it, it's done it in um, alphabetical order so we have our a's at the top then all the part numbers are put in underneath it and that's that's what we'll be looking to do with any of the the bills of materials that we do for any subsequent drawings here so the final thing we need for um, from the view side of things is just this nice isometric here so why you'll see you'll see a lot of drawings will have the isometrics in it is because it's just it makes it that little bit clearer it's easier to assemble the it's easier to assemble this universal joint if you have that isometric here in the top right hand corner it just makes things a little bit clearer so if I go to view layout, click on model view, still in assembly one, which is what I'm looking for, and click on next. And if I select isometric here in the top, I'm going to scroll down to the options here. Instead of with hidden lines removed for the isometric, I'm going to go with shaded with edges. And for the scale, click on use custom scale, and I'm going to go with one as to two for this one, because I think one as to one would be a bit big here in this corner. So I'm going to drop that up here in the top. And that looks good there to me. So we'll click OK to that. Final step, or well, second to last step, is we need to add the balloons. So we need to add each part or each item number which has been listed in the, the bill of materials needs to have a balloon coming off it to indicate where it is. So if I come back to the annotations tab again, come across to balloons here it is in the here it is here so click on balloon and we'll select each part individually so first one I go with is that crank assembly this is all just left clicking so once I have the balloon active or the balloon command active just left click on an edge left click again to drop and then move on to your next your next part so I can click on this pin here drop the pin um, this is the spider here so we'll drop that there uh, the short pin is here another one of the short pins yoke male and yoke female we can go off this view so you'll see that for where I'm dropping the balloons it doesn't matter which view I select just so long as each part or each assembly has a balloon coming off it so it doesn't matter which view I, I come off of we also need to make sure that each part or assembly has been ballooned so I can see here that one two three four six and seven so I have that I miss a number five number five is the item number five is the long pin so I need to select on this long pin I think no that's number seven so we'll cancel that, go back into balloon, and this is probably the long pin here. So if I select that, yeah, that's the long pin going through the center. So I can see there visually that I have all my parts and sub-assemblies ballooned. So I have one to seven there. If it's a case that you have a bigger assembly and it's not as easy to just count them all up, if I click on this triple arrow here on the left-hand side of the bill of materials and pop it out, you'll see here that there's a little a one kind of a symbol of, of a balloon beside each of the assemblies and parts that indicates that they're all 
they're all ballooned so if I just just to show you if I come here and if I delete that guy just to quickly show you if I delete that and then I come back here to my just pop out that thing you will see that the balloon is missing from my assembly so that's a, a quick check to make sure that you have everything ballooned so that looks pretty good to me um, all ballooned, nice clear views, isometric in your bill of materials is here the last thing I need to do is to update the title block here in the bottom so what I want to do is right click anywhere in that title block so I'll just right click here and go to edit sheet format what I need to update on this sheet is the date the design by and the title so and also for yourselves update your student number as well so for design by if you want to update it just double click on it so I'm just gonna leave it at that check by you can leave it at that at whatever is is set date change that to whatever is needed so today is the 20th so I don't need to change that title so for the title for this it's universal joint so I just type that in and student number you can change and update that as you need to as well when you're finished all updated click on this and it brings you back to the view or back to your your overall drawing so that's it that's the drawing completed and it looks more or less the same the, the location of some of the balloons might be slightly different but that's that's not important so long as all the parts are ballooned and just for yourselves I'll send this around later on as well so it's just a quick checklist to go down through yourselves once you're finished doing all the assemblies so I would no need to talk down through it you see it here quick scan down through all of that before you actually submit any drawings and you should be okay with that then so thanks very much for watching and we'll speak to you soon